What do a billionaire lawyer, a billionaire hedge fund manager, and a former head of marketing at Pixar all have in common? One tiny newspaper with enormous plans in motion named the Daily Journal. Hey everybody and welcome back to Dollars and Cents, helping you make sense of making dollars. Founded originally in 1888 as the Daily Court Journal, the Daily Journal publishes commercial advertising and public notices including legal notices like deaths, court hearings, and so on. What makes the Daily Journal, or TDJ as we will call it, different is the billion billionaire lawyer, the billionaire hedge fund manager, and the former head of Pixar's marketing. Who are these people? Well, the billionaire lawyer is none other than Warren Buffett's right-hand man, Charlie Munger, who bought TDJ in 1977. He hired billionaire hedge fund manager Peter Kaufman to manage TDJ's investments, and Pixar's former head of marketing, Mary Conlon, to essentially oversee TDJ's marketing and communications. Over the years, Munger built out TDJ's portfolio of papers and publications. Nowadays, the company has 10 in-print newspapers and one online publication. Most of these papers circulate in California, with the sole exception being The Record Reporter doing its own thing out there in Arizona. Of course, as much as I would like to talk about an old, tiny, and otherwise boring newspaper company for 10 minutes or so, I think there are deeper, more pressing, and substantial matters going on behind the scenes of the Daily Journal. We just need to dig a little deeper with some good old research. And speaking of research, if you appreciate all the research that goes into these videos, be sure to drop a like and hit the subscribe button for even more content on finance and investing. Also, join my Discord to talk investing and hang out with other cool people from the community. This seemingly boring little newspaper has some big money behind it. And we're not just talking about Charlie Munger, billionaire, Peter Kaufman, also billionaire, or Mary Conlon, superstar marketer. No, let's talk about the money moving through the Daily Journal. The first thing I'll point out is the Daily Journal is a publicly traded company, ticker symbol DJCO, with a market cap of $438 million. We are just barely past the micro cap definition here. Next is a price to earnings ratio of 37. This isn't great, but it's also not bad, just kind of normal and in line with today's market. Even with the newspaper business becoming a dying medium for information distribution, TDJ's income statement shows strong revenue growth, starting at $40.7 million in 2018 and growing to $49.9 million in 2020. That's pretty substantial growth. What is easily the best part is the balance sheet, and oh boy. First, $238 million in assets? Cool. Following that is $96.8 million in liabilities, and importantly, the $31 million in debt, which we'll talk about later. Lastly, TDJ has $206 million in cash. That's a lot. With a market cap of $438 million, we have a whopping $206 million in cash. And with this, to get a truer representation of the company itself, you can actually subtract the $206 million in cash on hand from the $438 million market cap, giving us a market cap of actually $232 million. Now we come to another interesting bit, the cash flow state. Looking here, we see that TDJ has $2.15 million in free cash flow. This is up from a $2.09 million loss in 2018. If we take the average of the last three years of free cash flow, we get $500,000, 2018 bringing it all down. And if we multiply this by 20, we get about $10 million in market cap value. 10 million. However, we've already established that TDJ's current market cap is 232 million. So what's actually going on here? These numbers really don't line up. Should we be expected to pay tech multiples for a boring little newspaper company? Let's start with TDJ's cash on hand and why they have so much of it. That $206 million as of the company's last reported quarter isn't actually cash, it's a stock portfolio. That makes sense when one of the big three at the Daily Journal is, oh, you know, a billionaire hedge fund manager. We know this because of a little document called a 13F. If an asset manager has over $100 million in assets, it has to file a 13F, and TDJ certainly does. Through this document, we can see that the portfolio holds only five stocks, Bank of America at the top, Wells Fargo, Alibaba, US Bancorp, and at the bottom, POSCO, a Korean steel company. And here's another interesting piece of this mystery. A non-callable margin loan billionaire Charlie Munger took out around 2013. The loan was initially for $30 million with an interest rate of 0.75% to get started. It's the largest sum of the company's long-term debt. Here's the crazy part. The loan is paid for by the dividends from the cash on hand really a stock portfolio. Think about it, it's actually crazy, right? TDJ's non-callable margin loan at a fixed 0.75% interest rate is entirely paid for by the dividends in its stock portfolio. 
All of TDJ's short-term debt is actually long-term capital gains taxes, which the company doesn't realistically ever have to pay. It's almost literally free money. Clearly, something very interesting is happening with this tiny, boring newspaper. Something very interesting indeed. Yet, recent acquisitions also offer more intrigue as to what's going on behind the scenes. Over the years, TDJ acquired several tech companies, Sustain Tech in 1999, New Dawn Tech in 2012, and finally ISD Tech in 2013. Together, these formed the Journal Technologies. What use would a newspaper company have for a tech-based subsidiary? I don't think it's for running TDJ's online publication. But what does Journal Technologies actually do? It's essentially a software as a service service or SaaS business. Journal Technologies builds software for the criminal justice system designed to streamline court system processes and also interfaces with third-party software. The subsidiary also goes to various municipalities to strike 10-year deals with local court systems. According to its website, Journal Technologies has software in 500 court systems across 42 U.S. states, and contracts with international courts, including two in Australia worth $16 million and $89 million. On top of that, billing for all of Journal Technologies contracts start four to seven years after signing. In short, Journal Technologies hasn't even started making bank on all these contracts yet, but oh boy, it'll be huge money when it does. Now that $232 million market cap over the $10 million market cap estimate starts to make a little more sense. Journal Technologies already has a strong foothold in bringing much of the criminal justice system software to the 21st century. Come to think of it, I can't think of any other company trying to do this. Admittedly, my knowledge of legal software companies is not all that deep or extensive. If you want to dive a little deeper for yourself, I've included a link to TDJ's website in the description. Yet the most intriguing of all of the Daily Journal's mysteries and what we've been able to uncover through research is the secrecy around it all. TDJ doesn't do earnings calls. It doesn't list its court contracts in its financial statements, and we don't even know what these contracts are worth. This is fine though, because TDJ hasn't collected on any of these contracts yet. The company only has to report them if collecting on these contracts. Really, the company doesn't disclose much publicly, despite the fact that it's a publicly traded company. Let's do a short little recap. The Daily Journal can safely be split into three sections. The first section is the newspaper business, the publications dealing with the commercial ads and legal notices. We'll call this the front side, the boring side. The second section is the cash on hand section, or in truth, the investment stock portfolio side. This section pays for the third section of the Daily Journal. The third section then is the software company subsidiary, Journal Technologies, and the non callable margin loan taken out by Munger to create it. The dividends for section two, or the stock portfolio side, pays the loans. Journal Technologies, or section three, builds software that can bring court systems, domestic and international, into the 21st century, offering 10-year contracts. Is there a downside? Maybe. The only downside I can see is the software system side of the business underperforming or just not working out the way it plans. Let's construct a worst case scenario. Remember, this is just speculation and a giant what if. We'll jump five years into the future and revisit Journal Technologies and the Daily Journal. Journal Technologies is underperforming against expectations, despite the however many millions earned in already established 10-year contracts domestically and internationally. It's not securing new contracts or competitors have caught up and offered better products or services at cheaper prices. TDJ's investment portfolio has reached the $438 million market cap from 2021, and both Charlie Munger and Peter Kaufman, the billionaire hedge fund manager, haven't done much to that portfolio. Portfolio. With the trends in 2021 showing the physical newspaper publications will be going to independent online sources, the newspaper section of TDJ is gone too. What could TDJ do in this scenario? Worst case scenario, liquidate or dissolve the Daily Journal and return all capital shareholders. But again, this is just speculation, an imagined worst case scenario at best. We don't even know what tomorrow truly looks like, let alone five years. In the long term of the Daily Journal, I'm extremely bullish. I believe that it's currently just a very misunderstood business. On the surface, the company looks like a boring little newspaper with 10 publications. Really, all the secrecy surrounding TDJ doesn't help it either. Yet, what I think is the most likely outcome to every Everything is that as the revenue pulls in from these software contracts in the next three to five years, people will start paying attention to it. 
TDJ might get really popular and garner a ridiculous stock price. Mr. Munger is unlikely to sell it, I believe. On every metric, I strongly believe TDJ is a win-win. Of course though, it's going to take patience as the software side, Journal Technologies, is still building up and no one can predict how the future will change. Yet overall, I think the Daily Journal is a really well-kept secret. For those like me that do a little cold hard research and decide to take the plunge, TDJ could be a potentially huge return on investment over the next few years. These are the kinds of companies that I love investing in. Even though, very sadly, TDJ does not pay dividends, companies that have truly world-class management like TDJ and are well hedged against possible downsides. I will certainly be adding this to my portfolio soon. Of course though, I'm no expert. You should definitely do your own research and this is something that you want to invest in for yourself. You you're in on the secret now, what's your next move? I hope all of you enjoyed this episode and I hope to see all of you in the next episode of Dollars and Cents.